operate. He says, don't go for the off. It's a pinched nerve. All you need to do is stretch yourself a little awkward and then the nerve will be released. So sometimes we don't have to be spending all the inconvenience in the hospital and the money. Just listen to Dr. Brennan. Pinch nerve, you just do something, cut some trees, mop, mop the floors, you know, something that gets you moving. And it pops out and you, you're okay. Watch here. In God can heal you, rather, in demonology, part of 59, he says to a person, he says, there's a horrible demon over you. I see you suffer from upset. You're upset all the time, very grouchy in the mornings. He says it's your sugar levels. I would have never thought of that. There are some people when they wake up, goodness gracious, you need the army to come now. <laughs> well, it's because the sugar levels were building up overnight. He says it's your sugar levels, amen. Oh my, in another quote, many of them are put together. He says dizziness and headaches could come from high blood pressure or low blood pressure. Sometimes nervousness results in dizzy spells. Sugar in the blood. Another one he says you've got a growth in the neck and the doctors couldn't pick it up. So the growth in the neck was blocking some arteries from taking the blood to the head and headaches. Another one he said you are being not treated correctly your headaches are due to your menopausal state. You see, doctors sometimes miss it. It, it. it needs God to say, in your case, headache is because of this. In that case, it may not be the same thing. Amen? Oh, we need God. We need God. Go tell part of 140. Again here he says, you are grouchy in the mornings. It's your blood pressure. Over there, sugar levels. You see how the doctor is diagnosing differently? Amen. We need God. Then go tell my disciples. He says the same thing. He says, no wonder you've got high blood pressure, brother. It's because you don't sleep well. Look at that. Sometimes sleeplessness can cause something else. He says you've got high blood pressure because you don't sleep well. Amen? He says, if you don't get healed, you'll die pretty soon. The other one, he says, in Voice of the Sign, Tulsa, or Tulare, California, beg your pardon, volume 22, 12, he says, your nervous condition causes your heart blood pressure. So there are different reasons. That's why we need God. We need God. Here's another one. He says you suffer from high blood pressure and you've been wondering, you are all right all the time, suddenly after the car crash, high blood pressure. He says it's the stress <coughs> from the accident. I don't know, trauma. That's the word they use today. The trauma. God have mercy. Now we are coming to some sensitive parts. Insulin. You know, insulin is a protein hormone secreted in the pancreas, and it's supposed to control glucose in our blood. When that fails, for whatever reason, the doctors suggest that you take insulin shots. The prophet of God says, hmm, you know, dot, dot, dot. He says, insulin, bad stuff. Another place, he says, it's good up to a certain extent. So you balance the two. Let the doctor tell you which is good for you. Some people, insulin kills them. Some people, it balances their condition. The doctor speaks. Then over here, he says, your nerves are so short, he says, it pumps up your blood. Over here, in Jehovah Jireh, Charlotte, North Carolina, he says, did you know low blood pressure is worse than high blood pressure? I didn't know that. I thought high means high, so you die soon. I says, no, low is more dangerous than high. We are learning from the doctor, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, God of mercy, 1951, manifestation of the spirit, part 72. 
He says insulin, bad stuff, an awful thing. Then he comes over here, he discerns ladies who are going through a certain time in their life. It's called menopause, he says. He says that's exactly where Sarah was in Genesis 18. She said, me being old and Abraham being old, he says, today they call it menopause. It comes from the Greek word menses, the 28 days pausing, stopping. Menses, pause, menopause. But he goes on, he says, do you know God can heal that? And their sisters would think that once they hit that stage, no, he, he says, God can heal that. God can, God can give you a blood transfusion. Oh, I love that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, you have the right to ask God for your blood again. Amen. I believe it. Though men don't go through it, we go through something else. <laughs> the prophet says in the message indictment, he says, when men hit that stage, he says, they run around. You find a man with no hair at all, a little bit of hair, he wants to make a phone <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> At that stage, he wants to wear shorts now. <laughs> like he's going to the beach. He says, poor guy. Is that right? Yeah. He says, but women often cry, they weep. And I pity anybody whose wife is going through menopause. If they don't have the Holy Ghost, you will misunderstand me. Yeah. You will. Because some of them whine all the time. They want, But if you don't know, you think she's going cold. She's crazy. She's not crazy. She needs your attention. She needs for you to understand. And then when you pray together for the condition, it eases matters. Amen. The man says it's a stage of life we all have to go through. Is that right? Lord of mercy. You've gone quiet, but that's all right. The prophet of God says, see, menopause is what? He says, change. It's a change of time. You've been getting sick spells, stomach trouble. You don't eat well. Your food does not digest right. So your menopause has started peptic ulcers in your stomach. Mm -hmm. It's the devil, of course. Yeah. If he can use anything to complicate and take yeah. your life, he will do it. But he says, over here, he says, sometimes you belch up your food in your stomach. It's the acid. It's because of your age. And you suffer from bad breath. It says it doesn't come from the teeth nor the gums. It's the essence in the stomach. They call it halitosis today. He says, but in my discernment, and know it not, volume 2, number 10, he says, in the discernment I pick up girls from 20, 25 years old, already going through menopause. This was 1965. And it ain't getting better. Yeah. So we need prayer all the time. Amen. Is that right? Amen. See, you may look young today, but if you leave God and you don't trust God, what guarantee do you have? Yeah. That starting at 15, you could be menopause. We trust God in all things. Amen? Amen. Now we are coming to the most disturbing part of things, but it helped in my church. Now, the prophet of God says, when sisters go through menopause, doctors give you this hormone shot. Are you ready? Don't do it. He says here, usually cancer, it's a wild cell. Like some of your sisters going through the time of menopause, and they give you this hormone shot. Don't do it. And I know we can argue till kingdom come. But over here, he said, when it comes to he says, don't do it. I'll tell you why. Later, he says, you see, cancer is a scavenger. It's a buzzard. <coughs> cancer comes from a bruise. And when it bruises, then it no longer gets blood. Then it dies. And a demon jumps in. Satan puts a demon in there. Cancer, they call it. Cancer calls it, or doctors call it a cancer, 
God calls it a spirit. And he goes on, he says, don't take them shorts. And I thought, it's the only place. Here's another one. In love, the message called love, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada. He says, how old are you? How old are you? Well, on the tape, they reply. He says, see what I mean? It's menopause. It's a change of life. You get all kinds of feelings. There's really nothing wrong with you. The body's going through it. Hormones are seizing in your body. Don't you let any doctor give you any hormone shots. You know what it is? First case of cancer. They are putting the first case of cancer cells in you. You keep them out and you trust God. Amen. He says it again. In greater than Solomon is here. More than one place. He says they give you these hormone shots. Don't you do it. Well, when I read this in the church, I was shocked myself. And there were sisters who were taking the shots. And they stopped by faith. And the husband said, wow, life is back to normal. Amen. Sometimes Brother Ben says the shots is what they put in those shots. Yeah. Is what makes you even more sick. Yeah. So at least on this one I'm safe. The others you would say uh, like insulin. He said it's good, it's not good. But this one he says, don't you take it. Cortisol. He says, don't you take it. Why? He says, cortisol, the doctor speaks, is compound E. It's steroids. And it's from the bile of an ox. And they put that in you. Cortisol. Get away from that zone. Yeah. Cortisol. Stay away from that zone. Amen. Then he speaks about Rockefeller, who misunderstood his wife when she was going through that period of life. He left her and he took a secretary. The prophet says, What a shameful thing. Brothers, when your wives get to that, you trust God and understand. Then he speaks about penicillin. He says a doctor can give you medicine, that's how far you can go. Medicine like penicillin kills the germs. But along with that, it kills something else. That's a problem. While they're trying to correct the one thing, they're killing something else. He says penicillin is good. These antibiotics will kill, to a great extent, they will kill the bug. But sometimes penicillin kills the very person. Yeah. So now you trust God. If the doctor says, I want to give you this, let me pray about it. Amen? Amen? Amen. If you put God first, Amen. there's no medicine that will fail. If you Amen. put God first. Amen. I'm not saying don't take it. I'm saying put God first. Then he speaks about brothers. When we reach 40, how the eye actually gets flat and you need glasses like I do. And there are times without my glasses, I don't see too well, and my wife says, that's when I love you. <laughs> Did you read her? When I say, Portia, I don't see too well anymore, she says, now I love you. I know what she means. She says, you see me, that's enough. <laughs> Wonderful, hallelujah. Now, in the message, 1955, the calling of Abraham, Part of 19, we're going to close. He says, sisters who are struggling to fall pregnant. This one, I became a champion in my church for finding this quote. I didn't make the quote, I just found it. But I became a champion. He says, sisters who are struggling to fall pregnant for your husband. He says, eat a lot of berries. Quote. Who told him to say that? It has to be God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Branham speaks Christ to him. He says, eat a lot of berries. They are rich in protein. Then baby will come. In another one, he says, no sister really can fall pregnant where there is stress and strain. He says, learn to relax. Amen. Amen. In another place, he says, take the baby adoption route. Yeah. It doesn't mean... You can go adopt a baby, of course. It worked with some sisters. Brother Ben says, you want a baby of your own? Yes, go adopt one. And then, after some time, their baby comes. 
But in another quote in, in adoption, he says, take the adoption root. He says, adopt faith. Amen. Some people struggle. They say, I don't have faith, Brother George. I don't have faith. Adopt faith. He says, behave like we have the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's not hypocrisy. We're not talking about hypocrisy. He says, watch people who have the Holy Ghost. How they talk to their wives. How they, they treat their children. He says, adopt it. He says, when God sees you doing it, He gives you the Holy Ghost. You don't give up and say, well, I'm made like this, and so God made me like this. No, you never get anywhere like that. You say, okay, I am like this, and I don't like to be like this. So when I see Sister Faith speaks like this to Pastor, I'm going to speak like that to my husband. Brother, you do likewise. Watch your pastor, how he speaks to the wife. You do the same. Not like a brother I know before I close. The wife says, husband, when we're in public, please, speak to me in a gentle, loving way. You know, I'm among other sisters. You speak to me and how I lose respect. You know what the brother used to do? This is going to be a bit crass, but it will teach a brother a lesson. He used to say, over the crowd, the wife is over there, hey, you mother of six, bring me a drink. Now, who wants to drink? Everybody must know their mother of six. Maybe you're at a company party where they don't know you. Now it's mother of six. Everybody says, oh, mother of six. So she goes home, husband, please. If we're in public where they don't know, my name is Catherine. He goes on again, hey, mother of six. So you know what she did one day? Yes, father of only two. <laughs> He never again embarrassed her. <laughs> See? We love him, but he will stay with you, brother. That he has as much right if you keep on. Have mercy, Jesus. <laughs> so, in the message, Expectation, Power 42, the only quote I've come across where he addresses syphilis. He says, they give you syphilis salvasan, must have been a kind of an injection in those days. They give you 606 mercury and penicillin and so forth. That's going to kill you faster than the syphilis itself. He says, pray and trust God. Amen. So here, he's showing us that some medications, as much as it is dispensed by doctors with maybe many years of learning, he says, Sometimes in the ignorance they can kill you. He says, pray, pray, just pray. We've addressed the ulcers, everything. Depression, he speaks about depression. He says, call better trouble may cause depression too. He says, call better trouble, put strain on your nerves. And then your nerves make you feel depressed all the time. Is that right? That in why, part of 22 as we are about to close, he says, antibiotics, now Americans say antibiotics, we say antibiotics, you know. He says, you have antibiotics that are good germs as well as bad. I think we addressed that, so we'll move on. A man, depression, he has done, explained that. But in this case, he says, you suffer from fear. There are people who fear anything. Yeah. They fear the dark, they fear the water running in the shower. I don't know how to manage the shower. But people have all kinds of fears. He says that will lead to depression. So the Bible, as we very well know, every time the angel of the Lord appeared anywhere, the first words were, fear not. Amen. Amen. So by right, a Christian ought not to have any fear. I know plenty of them fear they, miss, they may miss the rapture. The very fact that you fear shows that there's something wrong with your faith. You ought to be looking forward to the rapture. You ought to be saying, Lord, I'm rapture material. There's no way you want to leave me behind. I'm doing my best to put that word in me. I'm rapture material. I'm not staying behind. But there's this fear, not fear. The devil's going to hit you hard. Fear is terrible. Brother Benham, as we close, is going to address the question of weight. I thought to keep that for last. And I'm not here to disparage anybody. There are different reasons why 
others are like me, others are, others are bigger. There are different reasons. And the reasons may not be because people eat too much. No. There are many reasons why this happens. But you are going to love me at the end of the service for reading the quotation where the prophet answers the best weight loss ever. How many of you ever heard him say? No. Why? It took me months to research. It can take you months also, likewise, to research anything else. So we are told that the thyroid, and the doctor here in my church gave me this article. It's a little flapper here. When your thyroid isn't functioning right, it interferes with metabolism, the breaking down of anything you eat. So, Brother Benham is going to tell us, he says, the first thing you look at is not run for a diet or a tablet. Mm -hmm. The doctor speaks. He says, have your thyroid checked. And then over here, in expectation, leading of the spirit, part of 63, he says, your thyroid is malfunctioning, and that's why you are overweight. You see, he's connecting it, and the doctor says, they didn't know this. In the 50s, when Brother Bell spoke it, it's Amen. a modern discovery. Yeah. I hope you appreciate it. Yes. They are now discovering what your prophet told you in the 50s. Amen. That your thyroid is not functioning properly, that's why you are overweight. Doctors are now confirming it. That's what I love about this message. It will back itself up. Yes, sir. Thyroid. So, Psalms 23, verse 4, I'm going to have a play on words. Thy rod, thy rod, thy rod and stuff, they comfort me. Amen. So if the doctor cannot find the source which the prophet says is the thyroid, you trust God that he finds that your thyroid is malfunctioning. Amen? Amen. Now we are closing. The prophet of God says, in time-tested memorials of God, 1957, Jeffersonville, Indiana, he says, I've lost 20 pounds since I last saw you. He's talking to his own church. He says, I got on the scales the other day when I left for these meetings. I was weighing 165. I got back. I now weigh 145. I lost 20 pounds. And a lovely sister noticed it and said, Brother Brandon, pray that I can also lose weight too. I'm a little bit on the strong side, she said. I said to her sister jokingly, if you want to lose weight, why don't you come along with us on these missionary trips? <laughs> of course, that's on the jokey side. But now, it comes to the real stuff, and you give me five minutes or so, I'll close. In Jehovah Jireh 1961, are you ready, sister? Okay. Here comes Dr. Brennan speaks, and God must have told him, to help all of us. He says in Jehovah Jireh, Richmond, Virginia, 1961, paragraph 11, he says, you want to lose weight, sisters, they say, amen on the table. He says, take it from me, cook blackberry cobbler. I don't know what that is. But there is something in the blackberry, the way they cook it, he says, cook blackberry cobbler. And if you listen to the tape, he isn't joking. So if any sister knows what that is, I don't know, I'd like to know, it'll help. Cook blackberry cobbler. He said you will lose weight. Now we come to the order of the day. You know, we live in an hour where as in the Bible it was Adam and Eve. Now it's Adam and Steve. <laughs> I hope nobody's called Steve here. Or nobody's called Adam. You know how it is when you preach. I'm just making a reference, not on you as Adam and you as Steve. Just to show we are living in Sodomic conditions. Well, as it was Eve back there and Adam, now it's Eve and Evelyn. And I hope nobody's called Evelyn or Eve. It's the hour we're living in. And Dr. Branham tells us the, the, the first one ever I've heard put it this way. And it wasn't so from the beginning, 1961. He says homosexuals on the increase. I picked up a magazine the other day. No, it was a newspaper in California a few weeks ago in Los Angeles. And they said that homosexuals had increased 50%. Men, women living together. He says, what is it? What has happened? He says, you see, 
the natural life has changed in men. His mind is changed. His spirit is changed. Amen. So this thing is a spiritual malice. Because the body is male, but his spirit is female. The body is female, but her spirit is male. It's a spiritual problem. But in flashing, red light of his coming. Oh, this one I've got to read. In flashing, red light of his coming, in part of 120, he says, what it is, is, some cells in the body have switched their positions. He says, what causes that? The food we eat. The devil is a cunning one, isn't it? Look how they keep processing food. Keep pro he knows what he's doing. His aim is to switch some cells in boys, switch some cells in girls, and we end up with this provision. I'm closing with beautiful news. Two quotations, which when read in the assembly, three doctors, one chemist. The one chemist I was testifying or sharing with the pastor, Reading this quotation here sparked it for him. Harvest time, Phoenix, Arizona, volume 18, number 6, 1964, part of 266. He says, the hemoglobin, the ones that make the blood in the child, has to come from the father. Because the baby can't even take its mother's disease, like TB. Did you know that children born of AIDS infected mothers, they don't get the AIDS while they're in the womb. They get it through the birth canal. God has to protect the child. So the, it's amazing. I don't know how, but the prophet says, no. While it's in the womb, it does not get it. You know, the doctor heard it. And now they have a tablet that they give to such people. I don't know what it does, but it kills whatever in the birth canal and the babies are born without. The mother may have it. Now, this where the prophet spoke in 64. He says the baby while in the womb cannot catch TB or anything. Watch what he says. He says, it could inherit it from the breath of the mother, but not inherit it while it, it will breathe or catch it. She cannot take it from the mother because she, the child, is free from it. The mother's blood does not affect the child while in the womb. When this quotation was read about the breath of the mother, the child is already born from a TB mother. The child didn't have it. But the breath of the mother, while it's nursing the child, a brother in our church of chemists took this quotation quietly. He designed a breathalyzer. Like the very one when they stop you for drunken driving. He just modified it and now they can pick up TB through a Even diabetes. He has designed a machine to just breathe into it, they don't prick you anymore. And it will tell you what type. America is so excited for this problem. It's an African drug. So exciting. When he announced it two days later, America had paid a ticket for him to come demonstrate it at a medical right. symposium. Pray for our brother. Amen. Believe in the message. Amen. Our quotation is read like this. Amen. Something sparks. Amen. He's not the only one. Here's another one. This one is a brother called John Narbury. I know him personally. He says, Sincere greetings, Brother Martin. This is 1995, March the 12th. I had met him a year or so before. He says, concerning the AIDS compound, it's a long story. When I met him in Arizona, in a church like this, after the meeting with shake hands, I could tell from his accent that he was from Africa. I said, you're not American.